I didn't have a lick of cash on me, but the bus was on a sunset rain early, and it was crowded enough for me to hop onto the back and slink out of sight. As if LA bus drivers would have the temerity to kick someone out that looked as I did. I felt a twinge of shame, as I must have smelled of red wine, and with my bare feet I would have looked straight out of the central casting for the role of... bedraggled wino vampire. Perhaps I was still on a kind of buzz, or perhaps the relief of losing that tone in my ears rebounded me into a floaty kind of high. The city was pretty at this hour. A soft rain trailed its familiar tears down the bus window pane, and I lost myself thinking about anything but what had just happened. There was plenty of time for that. Plenty of time for my punishment. Let me at least just enjoy a simple bus ride. I took the bus to Echo Park and then walked the rest of the way to downtown. There were more tents than I remember there along the outer ridges of the lake. These small settlements were oddly reminiscent of a different time. They were born out of desperation, sure, but you could sense a tight undercurrent of reliance coming from those who huddled outside. Perhaps a new democracy would come from one of these someday. Or something worse than what we have now, I suppose, is also a possibility. I slinked to the back alley of the second floor loft. There wouldn't be cameras there, I'd only have to grab a fire escape after a few tries and then... A few knocks at his window, the only thing missing to the entrance of La Vampire was a bit of levitation which I unfortunately have never gotten the hang of. He came to the window brandishing a gun, recognized me and undid four locks before beckoning me in. For Christ! I was this close to shooting you, man! Do you know what time it is? Yes, well, hardly here on a social call. Right, I guess this is what I should have expected, but couldn't you have come through the front, man? Rung the bell? Hmm, cameras? Those are mine, man. I own the whole building, remember? You okay? You in trouble? This, a uh, quick escape kind of thing, or can I use the bathroom? Flush of a toilet and he was back with a bottle of Jack. I waved it away rather violently. Right, sorry, I forgot. This is for me, my heartbeat, man. You effin' scared me. You should see yourself. He took a shot at Jack and slid it across the wood floor. I watched it tip over and grew nervous that it was leaking. I got up, grabbed it, hesitated a moment, then capped it and threw it onto his bed. So, I'm here to trade in. The piece is yours. Really? Wow, all right. Well, you sure made me wait, but you're a man of your word, Harry. Man, I wish we could celebrate, but, um, I guess... Hey, say, man, where are your shoes? Never mind that. Do you have the box? He went into a far room of his cavernous loft and returned after a long time with a steel box. Inside, a new driver's license passport, but nothing else. So, uh, about that, man gotta understand, man, it's been a long while since we made this arrangement. I really didn't think you'd ever do it, but hey, I never sold the art, right? But, um, I'll give you the cash. I'd give you the cash now, but I don't have any on hand. Maybe later in the afternoon when I call my guy, I could give you half. Hmm. I sighed. Don't bother. I'll be gone by then. These kinds of relationships were never perfect simply was something I'd learned to accept. Give the criminal set a generous deal and they'll take it as indication that you're a sucker. At least he still had my ID since they had no monetary value to anyone else. Suddenly, as if he'd remembered something, he ran into the other room. He brought back a large pair of basketball shoes, my size, with some socks. You have some guys I know left these. I bet they fit you. Yes, look amazing. I got no clothes your size, though, only my own, but... Ooh, snap! Look, look, I just remembered. He found his wallet almost giddy. Banana Republic gift card, there's one two blocks down. No idea if they'll have your size, but that's $300. Please, take it on me. I 
I sat on his fire escape, drinking his espresso until it was late enough for the store to be open. In irritating contrition, he told me about everything that had happened in his life, NFT this, crypto that. I wouldn't believe promises of the cash I frankly didn't care to collect at this point. When it was time, I asked him for one final espresso, and by the time he had packed his grounds, twisted the portafilter into place, and turned back to me, I had soundlessly disappeared. I climbed into the back of the bulletproof Escalade, so the chauffeur assured me twice. In my new Banana Republic dress shirt and the only pair of capris that fit me. I noticed just then the pattern on my shirt. I hadn't noticed there were little whales on it, having purchased whatever was in my size in a bit of a daze, a little embarrassed at my stench despite entering with the frankly ostentatious looking space age basketball shoes on. Are you sleazy? I thought the young man asked me as he opened the store for me, but he indicated my shoes. I showed him the gift card and told him the limit and he was agreeable in letting me wear the clothes out and disposing of my tattered jeans and shirt. I bought a pair of black wingtip shoes with white wings that were frankly not bad. He asked me three times if I was sure I didn't want to take the basketball shoes with me and seemed overjoyed that I left them as if he was in the presence of a missing Rembrandt. As I sat in the back of the car on my way to the airport, the joy on the Banana Republic employee's face reminded me why I kept dealing art. Art had had a commodified value for some time, but it was its fetishization that had always been of greater interest to me. Powerful people who had everything in the world at their disposal, anything their desires could concoct, still had the need to desire something that they could not have. Much like the salesman could only dream that a pair of these shoes would fall into his lap, the world's ultra-rich fed on that one piece of art even their money couldn't buy. I signed the papers for what was sadly my second-to-last Van Gogh on the jet and took my seat. The pilot introduced himself and shook my hand a little warily, emphasizing there was a shower in my quarters, a little rudely for my taste, but understandable. Okay, he said. Uh, where to? Uh, I smiled to myself. Uh, Paris? No, afraid not, Captain. That'll have to wait. London, please. I said forlorn as I looked out the runways, spotting a rabbit running across it, reminding me of the runways of Paris. I felt myself shift in time. As we took off, the altitude made me sleepy and I felt a single tear slide down my face as I drifted off. Curious indeed. Grief is curious indeed. Next time, on A Very Special Barnacle Harry. It is a good thing you've come, actually. For more than the practicality. It's like there's plenty to talk about. You are about 10 years early, aren't you? <laughs> Gets one thinking we should check in more frequently, perhaps.